Welcome back to this series of light reading conversations around leaders in cloud. Terry Sweeney here, contributing editor to Light Reading. Joining me now is Martin Halstead with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Martin, thanks so much for doing this today. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. We are uh, talking about telco cloud platforms, of course, which have emerged as an essential element for both carriers and service providers. Let's start by talking about the, the features and, and critical functions that are essential to offer uh, for Telco Cloud to differentiate themselves. Yeah, so when we think about Telco Clouds, um, the way that we see them being developed is um, the ability to have horizontal separation of the infrastructure from the software, from virtualization and the services that are needed to deliver them. So this is all a, um, a continuation of what telcos have been traditionally looking at and, and started by the advent of NFV or network function virtualization. So we see those same tenants um, being passed through for telco cloud as well um, to allow that uh, horizontal separation uh, and disaggregation of the various components that uh, that would make up the cloud. So this, to, in our view, you know, would make sure that those clouds are open. Help us understand a bit more about how your Toco cloud offering goes beyond just a software defined data center. Yeah, sure. So when we think of um, a Telco cloud, um, particularly in a telecoms operator's perspective, um, there are an additional set of functions and features that we need to ensure are working as part of that cloud on top of what an enterprise typically would have. So there's, those build up from uh, the perspective of things like resiliency, um, the idea that the infrastructure itself should be available at least to five nights. Not all applications are able to, you know, are cloud native and able to run on, um, you know, generic infrastructure. Um, the uh, the component sets that make up those clouds, um, in, again from a telecoms perspective, are tested for performance. Um, you know, drivers are working correctly, etc. So. So again, you know, uh, performance of things like SRIOV, DPDK, et cetera, be, again, becomes critical. And again, separate from what you'd have for a typical software defined data center. So, um, you know, telcos have got their own specific sets of requirements, which are very different to an enterprise. And that's really why, you know, an organization such as HP actually has a separate group that is dedicated to making sure that our cloud platforms function correctly in a telecoms environment. Thanks for that. Um, I think it would be helpful at this point to talk about the connection between 5G and virtualized network functions. Are, are telco clouds essential to help realize the, the full potential of 5G? Yeah, I would say that they are. Um, and, you know, particularly starting with, um, you know, the, even the design tenants around 5G and particularly the 5G core and its uh, services based architecture, it naturally leads itself to be delivered as a microservices based, um, you know, solution set. So obviously, um, you know, the implication of that is that it should run on generic compute. Uh, and in some cases that generic compute can be enhanced via accelerators, et cetera, for example, for the user plane function. But, but you know, the, the key design tenants around 5G um, you know, in terms of it being cloud native are, are critical. So as we move then towards standalone, networks um, and the radio access network, again, virtualization there is gonna be um, extremely important uh, once you move beyond baseband processing and uh, look at how do you virtualize, um, you know, the performance attributes of the radio access network via um, the RIC, for example. What about the management piece, which can often be quite, quite tricky and, and complicated? Uh, how, how easily do telco cloud management tools and systems map to carriers and service providers existing management systems? Uh, I would say badly at the moment. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of the reason behind that is that, you know, if you look at the networks that telecoms operators typically have today, they're very siloed. Um, so you have, um, you know, the optical networks separated from the transport networks, which are separated from the data center networks, which again are separated from the mobile networks and the management systems for each of those, are, you know, horizontal layers don't typically talk to each other. 
um, or are you know integrated you know, virtually by hand. So um, you know, as as the telecoms industry eventually moves to cloud native uh, applications and the merging of um, you know uh, communication services alongside. Uh, transport networks, et cetera, are going to dictate that, you know, management solutions have to really change um, and also, you know, add additional attributes. So, for example, you know, key to that is the use of open source um, and open interfaces, open standards, et cetera. Again, not much of that exists within telecoms operators today, but, you know, our company is, um, you know, is heavily involved in, you um, uh, in pushing that standardization. Martin, close us out by talking a bit about the benefits that are possible by moving edge networking services and functions to a telco cloud environment. Yeah, so so we can see that, um, you know, as, as the operators um, roll out their 5G core um, and look to deploy, uh, you know, look to distribute um, the user plane function, for example, of that closer to the edge of the of you know of of their telecoms networks, um, the the telco clouds have to start um, adding additional functions on top of, for example, baseband processing of the radio access network. So you know when we think of um, of you know of edge clouds in particular, um, we have to make sure that the platforms that would deliver that are capable of supporting multiple application sets, each of which have you know, very specific requirements about around, for example, user plane uh, you know, function, uh, functional su um, support, as well as um, you know, enough capacity um, to cater for um, you know, the, the real-time operations of the, of the telecoms providers. Martin, great stuff. Thanks for the context on telco cloud service offerings. Uh, plenty of challenges, but even more upside and potential as well. Thanks so much for doing this today. Thank you. We've been talking with Martin Halstead of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. This has been Terry Sweeney for Light Reading for this Leaders in Cloud series. Join us again. We'll see you then. Thanks very much.